If Beale Street Could Talk by James Baldwin. We're starting on page 77. I was his and he was mine. I suddenly realized that I would be a very unlucky and perhaps a dead girl should I ever attempt to challenge this decree. But he continued, and he moved away from me. His heavy hands seemed to be attempting to shape the air. I live with wood and stone. I got stone in the basement and I'm working up here all the time and I'm looking for a loft where I can really work. So all I'm trying to tell you, Tish, is I ain't offering you much. I ain't got no money and I work at odd jobs just for bread because I ain't about to go for none of their jive ass okie dokie. And that means that you're going to have to work too. And when you come home, most likely I'll just grunt and keep on with my chisels and stuff. And maybe sometimes you'll think I don't even know you're there. But don't ever think that ever. You're with me all the time, all the time. Without you, I don't know if I could make it at all, baby. And when I put down the chisel, I'll always come to you. I'll always come to you. I need you. I love you. He smiled. Is that all right, Tish? Of course it's all right with me, I said. I had more to say, but my throat wouldn't open. He took me by the hand then, and he led me to the pallet on the floor. He sat down beside me, and he pulled me down so that my face was just beneath his. My head was in his lap. I sensed a certain terror in him. He knew that I could feel his private stiffening and beginning to rage against the cloth of his pants and against my jawbone. He wanted me to feel it, and yet he was afraid. He kissed me, 